Hey everybody, Pejman Gadimi here, founder of Exotic Car Hacks, and we are back with yet another awesome video. Now today we are going to look at something that every single person wants to know. How much does it cost to own a Lamborghini Aventador? Now before I go on and kind of share with you that it's thousands of dollars and so on and so forth, I want you to understand a couple of things. First off, we've already done a video on how easy it is to afford a Lamborghini, especially a Gallardo. If you go to our archives, it's one of our most popular videos with over a million views currently. So make sure you check that out so at least you understand that. Secondly, make sure you understand a lot of the principles I teach at Exotic Car Hacks by actually clicking the link in the actual description that will take you to my free one hour training where you will learn everything you need to on how to hack your way and actually buy uh, and afford exotic cars without actually spending any of your money and in many cases making money. This is not a Turo app. This is not gonna teach you how to rent your cars. This is really going to teach you the finance behind some of these exotics that may make you wonder how so many of your favorite YouTubers are buying and trading exotic cars and really never losing any money and they can keep doing this over and over and over. Behind me is my new to me 2015 Aventador Roadster by Novitech. It is a $537,000 sticker in addition to $150,000 in Novitech based modifications including all Novitech carbon fiber, Novitech ECU, TCU, uh, titanium exhaust, a cat bypass, filters, additionally suspension, and anarchy wheels. Now this Aventador is one of the nicest I've ever driven and having owned at least two Aventadors now and one SV, I can tell you specifically that there's a significant difference uh, between Aventadors from year to year and models. And so today we're going to take a deep look at what it costs to actually own an Aventador and if you are indeed in a position to afford one because many people may see Aventadors currently on the used market selling for $200,000 and those are some of the most problematic Aventadors to date and one of the biggest financial mistakes you could ever make. One of the big concepts here at Exotic Car Hacks is teaching you specifically how to buy exotic cars and get out of them without the DRI, depreciation, cost of repairs, or insurance. And in many cases, it's more about buying the right car at the right price than buying the cheapest car on the market. Many people who enjoy, like some of the other YouTube channels out there, buying cheap exotics only to be able to claim they have a Lamborghini for less than 50,000 or an Aventador for less than 150,000 are typically taking significant chances that are going to end up in repairs that are going to astronomically oversight them buying a nicer, newer car with less miles that they could have enjoyed for free and in many cases even made money on. So today we're gonna to look at which Aventador we'll buy and we're gonna talk a little bit about what it costs to actually own one of these cars. So first off, let's go inside because I'm dying here, it's extremely hot, and let's talk a little bit about the cost of ownership on an Aventador and is it really affordable or is that all a hoax as you've seen on many other YouTube videos before. All right guys, so we are back and let's take a look at which Aventador should you buy. So first off, we should understand what the generations of Aventadors are because a lot of people don't even understand that part. While we know that the Murcielago started in 2002 and ended ultimately with the LP640 in 2010, the Aventador didn't start till 2012. And now while you would think it went to 2017 before the launch of the S, it actually went to 2014 before it had a major uh, lift. In 2015, we got a new, better version of the original Aventador, and that went to 2017. Now, in 2017, we got the uh, Aventador S, uh, and that carried on to today. Now, this is what I call the Aventador uh, Gen 2, and this is the Aventador uh, Gen 1, right? So, you know, a very close car, just a few differences, and then this is your Aventador uh, S. So one of the big things to consider with the Aventador is that there is a lot of different trims. And so on the surface, when you're looking at a car driving down the road, you as a person, maybe not as an exotic car expert, may not actually understand that that's, this Aventador S right here currently is somewhere around 400 grand, right? Or a little bit under that. But some of these older cars can be bought for much less money. You could buy a 2012 for as little as, and this is gonna probably scare you, 210K. That's $210,000 for a car that once was almost half a million dollars with barely any miles on it. So try to like 
put that in your head, that's crazy, right? And most 15s can now be bought uh, right about the 300K range. Now, one of the things I like to point out is that on the surface of things, we may say, well, wait a minute, that's a drastic difference, right? Almost $100,000 per generation on the used market. And all of these cars at some point were almost $500,000 new. So it does make a difference when you see a guy driving a $400,000 Aventador S versus an old ass 2012 uh, Aventador, because he, that guy paid pretty much what uh, less money than what a Huracan would be worth, and the other guy just doubled his money. So there is a difference. Now, we're not here to sit and talk about who's got more money or not. We're just trying to understand which generation you should buy and why you should avoid certain generations. So one of the big pitfalls with early model V12 Lamborghinis is that the earlier 2012 to 2014s are typically not that exciting of cars. And what I mean by that is they're filled with issues because they are what we call the first generation uh, of cars. And so if we were going to be looking at one of the first 2012s, while we would be looking at a car that has a lot uh, is worth a lot less money and more affordable to most, we're also looking at a car that is going to cost a lot of money to continuously repair. Uh, there is transmission issues. I mean, most of you should know that by now the Aventador is plagued with the uh, SCT, the single clutch transmission, which is extremely clunky, extremely uncomfortable to drive compared to uh, the DCT, the dual clutch transmission found in the Huracan. So a lot of people would say, well, why wouldn't they just put it? It just doesn't seem to fit. So the SCT, which is the first generation of it in the Aventador is very clunky and very annoying to drive and also plagued with issues. And so cost of Aventador repairs can be astronomical. You should know that most repairs for the engine are gonna require the engine out. Uh, most clutch uh, repairs are gonna be like 10,000 plus dollars and they're going to be astronomically bad, especially if the car is not helping preserve the clutch. One of the reasons why we recommend the 2015 and up is because that is legitimately a better version of the Aventador, one that is a pretty solid car where most of the glitches were taken out. So if you're going to be buying an Aventador, there is something you should know about the year. You should be looking for a 2015 Aventador. Now, why should you be looking for a 2015? Because the 2016 and 2017 are still depreciating hard. And the 2015 is the first year of the facelifted slash improved Gen 1 Aventador, which is the better buy currently. The second thing you should consider is that you really don't want a car that has been sitting with just a couple of hundred miles. You want a car that has under 10,000 miles. Now, on the surface, you may say, well, that's a lot of miles. I've seen cars with 2,000 miles, and that's true. But the difference is that with the 10,000 miles, you're going to have enough history to tell you how the car not only has been treated, but also how the car has responded to treatment. One of the big mistakes when buying exotic cars is that people typically go for either a car with a lot of miles, or they go, well, I don't have money and I can afford this car because it has 22,000 miles, or they go with a car that has 2,000 miles. The issue with 2,000 mile cars is that these 2,000 mile cars haven't been driven enough to see if the basic things in the cars would break or not, or if they were bore, uh, built poorly, there were lemons and so on and so forth. On the other hand, the cars with a lot of miles also have had extensive wear and will be in a poor position when trying to exit the car, meaning while you're saving money buying a 20,000 mile car, when you're gonna be selling it with 28,000 miles, it's now even a narrower and smaller audience to buy from. And so that is also a problem, and that is why one of the best value proposition for the Aventador is right under 10,000 miles. Enough miles to have been driven, but just not enough to hinder the next buyer from buying it from you. How about options? Well, you could understand that the Aventador is filled with options. We're talking about $120,000 plus in many cases in options. Uh, one of the biggest options on the car is the Roadster versus Coupe. Now, one thing you should know, this is from experience, the Roadster sells three to one to the Coupe. That is why you will see a significant uh, amount of additional coupes on the market versus Roadsters. The Roadsters seem to have a following for a couple of reasons. Most people understand that the Aventador is not a driver's car, it is a stunt car. And so as a stunt car, meaning a car that is made for showing off, the majority of owners want the top down. The second piece is also the cabin is extremely cluttered. And so with the top down, the experience is amplified significantly. And the fun factor can actually be enjoyed a lot more, especially since the car is not a driver's car. So I recommend the Roadster in general, because I just feel like it's just such a better resale and there's so many less units on the market. Now there are two things you need to be careful of when it comes to options with the car. All the Roadsters can also be full of carbon fiber. Uh, they can have sport exhaust, they can have wheel upgrades and so on and so forth. One of the big things to understand is that there's a significant difference between the cars 
and the options. Do not confuse a base model Roadster with no carbon with a fully loaded carbon based Roadster, which you know could have legitimately a thirty to forty thousand dollar difference on the used market and over a hundred thousand dollar difference on the new market. So understanding that will mean that you'll want some carbon. Contrary to what you may think, you want the carbon on the outside of the car in the engine bay uh, more than anywhere else. You don't necessarily need the carbon on the inside because that can be substituted fairly easily and fairly cheap using tools like eBay to actually find those carbon parts. So some of the carbon parts that I, I recommend on the car are the engine, uh, which is really Im important. Uh, I would also recommend the cross brace. I would recommend the diffuser. I would recommend the front vents. And then I would also recommend the glass bonnet, which gives you the whole view on the engine. Now, if you have these options, then all of the other options really become, come down to preference. But keep in mind on the used market, it's gonna be hard to find a picture perfect car without paying a premium. And in many cases, you should take this kind of list and narrow down or remove money based on each factor uh, found. The other thing that's really important is to look at the price on the Aventador. Uh, the price on the Aventador, uh, while on the surface, may seem to be very low going from as low as 210K all the way up to 500K, then you know one of the things you want to be considering is that the median uh, average price for a good Aventador that is low mileage and fits the criteria we're looking for uh, as a Roadster is going to be roughly $320,000. Now, some of you are gonna say, listen, I've seen them go cheaper at auction. Some of you are gonna say, I've seen them listed for less. Well, here's the difference. History matters with these exotic cars. And if you're following my training, which you can of course take at the bottom of this page uh, into the description, there's a link for you to take the free training. You would understand that it's not about buying the cheapest car, but it's about buying the right car at the right price. And the right car is a car with options, with limited miles as the best year possible. And of course, in a roster format, which means more people are looking for them because they're also knowledgeable about the market. And it also means that you're going to be competing for that. As a result of it, this car is not going to drop to 200K because more people are gonna want it, supply and demand will keep it up. So 320K is the budget for a 2015 event of the Roadster under 10,000 miles. That is a car that has not been salvaged, that is a car that has not been an accident, has not had any paintwork, has a clean history, and of course has over 75% of clutch life left. In many cases, over 80%. Anything uh, other than these things, you need to dis subtract from this number to get closer. So what does it really cost to drive a $320,000 car? How much money do you really need? A lot of people don't seem to understand. Again, this misconception that you need to own your Lamborghini cash or you couldn't afford this there because 80 plus percent of people who own exotic cars finance them. So what does this number mean? Well, a local credit union would give you a loan for 84 months, and this is at 3.99 percent on this particular 2015. Now, again, this is assuming you're following the guidelines found in my course. You don't have to have perfect credit, but you just need to understand how to position your credit to be able to get that. Now, 84 months at 3.99 on a $320,000 car also mean that with a car over 300, you're going to need about 10%. While the majority of exotics can be financed with zero down, uh, with cars over 300,000, in most cases, you're going to need 10%. We're not going to talk about exceptions. We're going to talk about the rule. And the rule is 10%, which gives you roughly a financed amount of $290,000. So when you're thinking about $290,000, how much does it actually cost to own the perfect Aventador Roadster at the perfect peak where you can drive it for free? Roughly, and you're ready for this, about $4,100 a month. It costs $4,100 a month with roughly $30,000 down to drive an Aventador Roadster uh, for a duration of 12 to 16 months. Now, Remember, the way I teach you in the course, 4100 does not go to the car. Like meaning this is not like a loss to you. This is not the cost of owning a car. This is the finest amount, including the interest, which the interest in this case is $900. So the cost monthly of ownership on this car is roughly $900, which means that over the course of one year, it would have cost you roughly about $12,000 to drive an event to the Roadster in its base uh, capacity, assuming you financed it and they pay for it cash. Now, here's the important part. The majority of event to the Roadsters in this year are selling, you're buying it for 320, but they're selling for about 330 to 350. 
So if you actually get good at using my strategy, you could actually bridge your $900, including your taxes, with your ability to buy about ten dollars to $15,000 below market, not by going to auctions, but by understanding how to buy these cars from the right dealers using the exotic car hack strategy. What I want you to understand that is that even the $900 is an optional spend, assuming you understand the strategy of being able to bridge yourself there. But I wanted to give you this scenario because a lot of people think that it takes millions of dollars to drive these Aventadors, and they're really usable, and they're really drivable. Now, I don't recommend one as a daily. You should keep in mind that it's extremely uncomfortable, visibility is very poor, and everybody and their cousin wants to take a picture with you. And while it's cool, it's just a huge lie ability to be able to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the last thing I'll leave you with is if you are going to be buying a 2015 uh, Roadster, try to get the Cantera stitching with the cross stitch uh, in the inside. It does help resale value tremendously and try to get a color that pops. While you may take a look at my car and say, well, well you didn't buy a color that pops. I bought my car specifically because it was a Novitec tuned car, including all the Novitec carbon fiber on it. It is a very different scenario than what we're providing here for a stock 2015 Roadster. In some cases where you get lucky and get the right mods on the car like I did without paying a premium, it may make sense to sacrifice the color. But in most cases, we've seen that resale is significantly stronger on bright color cars, especially orange or green. Other colors like blues also do very well and yellow uh, follows true to that after. Matte colors do well, white and black typically don't do as well as some of the other colors. But this will give you basically uh, an idea of how the Aventador works and if it's affordable for you. Remember to please subscribe to this video uh, and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you like this video. And of course, please take the training. I can't stress enough how often I share some of these values with you and without you understanding how the exotic car market works at one time in your life where you are in a position to buy an exotic car, you will find yourself faced with the decision that why didn't I take this training back then and why did I lose $30,000 in my money? So don't lose money on exotics. Learn these strategies. It's a finance-based strategy. It's not a game of buying and selling. It's a game of understanding how to leverage popular financial loopholes to be able to get in and out of exotics without a cost and in many cases, actually with a profit. The better you get at this, the more money you make at it, the worse you get at this, the more money you lose at it. So how your experience goes with your first exotic depends on your ability and knowledge to actually take this training. So click the video below, subscribe to this channel, like the video, and I'll catch you next time on another Exotic Car Hacks.